Tracking the evolutionary relationships of the various subspecies of modern lions can be a tricky affair. As far as paleontologists can tell, the Barbary lion evolved from a population of European lions, which themselves descended from Asiatic lions, which are still extant, albeit in dwindling numbers, in modern-day India. Whatever its ultimate heritage, the Barbary lion shares one dubious honor with most lion subspecies, having been wiped off the face of the earth by human encroachment and the dwindling of its once expansive habitat. The Barbary lion, also known as the Atlas lion, is an African lion subspecies, formerly native to North Africa, including the Atlas Mountains. The Barbary lion was once long considered one of the biggest lion subspecies, or even the largest of lions, and African felidae. Museum specimens of the male Barbary lion were described as having very dark and long-haired manes that extend over the shoulder and to the belly. Head to tail length of stuffed males varies from 2.3 to 2.8 meters, or 7.5 to 9.2 feet, and females measure around 2.5 meters, or 8.2 feet. A 19th century hunter described a large account of the weight of wild males was indicated as very heavy and reaching 270 to 300 kilograms, or 600 to 660 pounds. But the accuracy of the measurements may be questionable, and the sample size of captive Barbary lions was too small to conclude they were the biggest lion subspecies. Before it became possible to investigate the genetic diversity of lion populations, the color and size of lion manes were thought to be sufficiently distinct morphological characteristics to accord a subspecific status to populations. Results of a long-term study of lions in the Serengeti National Park indicate that various factors such as ambient temperature, nutrition, and level of testosterone influence the color and size of lion manes. Sub-Saharan lions kept in a cool environment of European and North American zoos usually develop bigger manes than their wild counterparts. Barbary lions may have developed long-haired manes because of the temperatures in the Atlas Mountains that are much lower than in other African regions, particularly in winter. Therefore, the size of manes is not regarded as appropriate evidence for identifying Barbary lion ancestry. The Barbary lions inhabited the range countries of the Atlas Mountains, including the Barbary Coast. Some of these areas include Morocco, Algeria, and Maghreb. The Atlas Mountains had cold temperatures when compared to other parts of the African region, especially in the winter. The Barbary lions lived in prides, even when there were not many of them left, especially in eastern Maghreb. In the early 20th century, when Barbary lions were rare, they were sighted in pairs or small family groups comprising a male and female lion with one or two cubs. Between 1839 and 1942, sightings of wild lions involved solitary animals, pairs, and family units. Analysis of these sightings indicates that lions retained living in prides even when under increasing persecution, particularly in the eastern Maghreb. The size of prides was likely similar to prides living in sub-Saharan habitats, whereas the density of the Barbary lion population is considered to have been lower than in moister habitats. When Barbary stags and gazelles became scarce in the Atlas Mountains, Barbary lions preyed on herds of livestock that were carefully tended. They also preyed on wild boar and red deer. The Romans used Barbary lions in the Colosseum to battle with gladiators. In the Middle Ages, the lions kept in the menagerie at the Tower of London were Barbary lions, as shown by DNA testing on two well-preserved skulls excavated at the tower in 1936-1937. The skulls were radiocarbon dated to 1280 to 1385 AD and 1420 to 1480 AD. The growth of civilizations along the Nile and in the Sinai Peninsula by the beginning of the second millennium BC stop the genetic flow by isolating lion populations. Desertification also prevented the Barbary lions from mixing with lions located further south in the continent. Historically, Barbary lions were offered in place of taxes and as gifts to royal families of Morocco and Ethiopia. The rulers of Morocco kept these royal lions through war and insurrection, splitting the collection between zoos when the royal family went briefly into exile. 
After a respiratory disease nearly wiped out the royal lions in the late 1960s, the current ruler established enclosures in Tamara, near Rabat, Morocco, to house the lions and improve their quality of life. There are currently a small number of royal lions that have the pedigree and physical characteristics to be considered as mostly pure Barbary descendants. Some were returned to the palace when the exiled ruler returned to the throne. In the 19th century and early 20th century, Barbary lions were often kept in hotels and circus menageries. The lions in the Tower of London were transferred to more humane conditions at the London Zoo in 1835 on the orders of the Duke of Wellington. One famous Barbary lion, named Sultan, was kept in the London Zoo in 1896. Typically, the story goes that the last lion was shot in Morocco in 1927 or 1921, but this date is based on rather superficial knowledge of available accounts. A dig into the literature reveals suggestion of later dates by well-established scholars including Cabrera, 1932, Guggisberg, 1963, Hemmer, 1978, each of whom made well-researched projections on the dates for likely extinction of lions based on collations of accounts in previous decades. All three of these commentators suggest survival of lions in North America into the 1930s. Five tested samples of lions from the famous collection of the King of Morocco are not maternally Barbary lions. Nonetheless, genes of the Barbary lion are likely to be present in common European zoo lions since this was one of the most frequently introduced subspecies. Therefore, many lions in Europe and American zoos, which are managed without subspecies classification, are partly descendants of Barbary lions. In 2006, DNA research revealed that a lion specimen kept in the German Neuwied Zoo originated from the collection of the King of Morocco and is very likely a descendant of a Barbary lion. In a comprehensive study about the evolution of lions, 357 samples of 11 lion populations were examined. Results indicate that four Atlas lions from Morocco did not exhibit any unique genetic characteristics. While the historical Barbary lion was morphologically distinct, its genetic uniqueness remains questionable, and the taxonomic status of surviving lions frequently considered Barbary lions, including those that originated from the collection of the King of Morocco is still unclear. The Living Treasures Wild Animal Park in Newcastle, Pennsylvania claims to keep a pair of Barbary lions in the park's collection. The Zoo Le Sable de Lone, Vendée, France, also claims to have a male and female Atlas lion. The former popularity of the Barbary lion as a zoo animal provides the only hope to ever see it again in the wild in North Africa. Many zoos provide mating programs, which will help to increase the population of the species. After years of research into the science of the Barbary lion and stories of surviving examples, WildLink International, in collaboration with Oxford University, launched its ambitious International Barbary Lion Project. Oxford used the latest DNA techniques to identify the DNA fingerprints of the Barbary lion subspecies. Researchers took bone samples from remains of Barbary lions in museums across Europe, like those in Brussels, Paris, Turin, and others. These samples were returned to Oxford University, where the science team extracted the DNA sequence to identify the Barbary as a separate subspecies. Although the Barbary is extinct, and is certainly extinct in the wild, WildLink International looked to identify a handful of lions in captivity around the world that may have descended from the original Barbary lion. These descendants were to be tested against the DNA fingerprint, and the degree of any hybridization from crossbreeding could then be determined. The best candidates were to then enter a selective breeding program, slated to breed back the Barbary lion. The final phase of the project intended to see the lions released into a national park in the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.